Okay, so in today's tutorial, I want to show how you can have your Bitcoin wallet set up in multiple software wallets. Okay, um, in this example, I'll have uh, my Bitcoin wallet, which I've already set up in Sparrow. Okay, and I've already received um, some transactions, I've made some labels, right, as many of you probably already have done. And so you'll see that wallet set up in Sparrow. And then I want to show you how you can import the exact same wallet into Nunchuck. Okay, so first thing we'll do is we'll import it the same way that we did with Sparrow from the cold card into Nunchuck. And that will get us all of the history of this Bitcoin wallet. And then I want to show how you can um, export labels that you've made in Sparrow Wallet. Um, and export those labels into Nunchuck so that you can have the same labels as well. Now, one caveat is that um, after you've done this uh, and, and you've, you've exported the labels and now they're all matching and synchronized, any new labels that you make in either of those wallets, so if you were to you know, receive a new transaction and then give it a label in Sparrow, that label won't appear in Nunchuck until you, you know, export it again into Nunchuck. And then likewise, if you were to receive some Bitcoin in Nunchuck and give it a label or a tag in Nunchuck, um, those won't uh, uh, be saved in Sparrow until you export them from Nunchuck to Sparrow, all right? Um, so just, you know, keep that in mind when you set this up and, you know, you'll see kind of just by using it over time, kind of what the, you know, what the trade-offs are or how to um, import and export labels. But I'll just walk you through some of those steps in this tutorial just to get you started, okay? So let's start and let's get the Bitcoin wallet that we already have um, set up in Sparrow and we'll import it into Nunchuck. Before we do that, um, actually, let's just take a look real quick at the Bitcoin wallet we have in Sparrow just to familiarize ourselves with um, you know some of the UTXOs, so we know what to look out for, and we'll we'll know right away if it's the <laughs> the same wallet. Um, but yeah, in in Sparrow, if we go to UTXOs, we'll see we have three different UTXOs belonging to this wallet. Okay, and we've given them some labels. Um, but yeah, so so these are the three UTXOs that we'll look out for once we import this into Nunchuck, and we'll know right away if. We, we've done that successfully. All right, so now let's go to our cold card. Um, when you have your cold card, what you'll need to do is first put your SD card in your cold card, okay? With the metal tabs facing upwards. And now in the cold card, you'll go down to advanced tools And then to this second option, export wallet, press check. And now here you'll go all the way down to generic JSON, and press check. All right, you can read through that and then press check once you're done. Now here you'll give it um, the account number and most of the time you'll just give it a zero if you're just you know setting up one account um, with this Bitcoin wallet. If you're setting up multiple accounts, then you can iterate, you know, one, two, three, four, and so on and so forth. But for the most part, you'll just be giving this the default zero and you can press check. All right, so now it's gonna save that, uh, that, that wallet's XPUB in a JSON format onto the SD card. And it's gonna save it as coldcard-export.json. So go ahead and press check, and then you can X back out to the main menu. And now we're done with the cold card. I'll eject the SD card, okay? And we can put the cold card down. Um, now let's go ahead and import this into Nunchuck. On Nunchuck, um, well actually on, on any mobile device, if you wanna import using an SD card, you're gonna need a mobile SD card reader, all right? Um, I think these are pretty cheap on Amazon, so you should be able to find one for your particular mobile device. Um, but this one's for an iPhone, right? It's got the iPhone threads and, uh, and uh, you know, um, they make them for um, 
USB-C type devices as well. So you can go ahead and get whatever one you need. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. Okay. And I will put in the SD card into that reader. All right. Now let's go ahead and open Nunchuck. Now on Nunchuck, on the main screen, um, there are two sections when you first open this up. There's a wallet section and a keys section. Okay, to create a wallet, you need to first have um, some keys in your account. All right, and you can either create um, hot keys, meaning you know create them internally uh, within the application, right? Or you can create um, air-gapped cold keys, right? You can import the XPub from any of your signing devices, and then you'll have an air-gapped cold key, similarly to you know what you're used to on Sparrow. So we'll go ahead and press the plus on the keys. We'll do this add air gapped key option. Okay. Press continue. Here we'll give this key name. We'll say label tutorial PK for private key. And now we'll import via file. Okay. So I'll click that. It's going to open up, um, if you're using an iPhone, it's going to open up your iCloud drive. But if you click on Browse at the bottom here, and if you have your SD card plugged in, you should be able to see the SD card under your locations. So click on that. And now there's that JSON file that we saved from the cold card. So we'll go ahead and click on that. Here it's going to ask you which derivation path you want. All right. Now, um, 84 is typically the standard derivation path. That is the derivation path used for native SegWit um, script types. So for the most part, you'll be using that uh, derivation path. But if you've used a different script type, then you would choose the appropriate one. Okay. Um, the other thing to note is if you're running everything in testnet because you're just experimenting, that second number will be a one. All right. If you're doing this in real life, you're, you're using real Bitcoin and you're setting up your actual wallet, that second number will be a zero and that zero is for mainnet. Okay. So one for testnet, zero for mainnet. We're setting up everything up in testnet though. So this is correct. 8410. Click that one. That's going to get the XPUB and now we can add key. Okay. So that's all set. Let's X out and go back. Now we can see the keys there. Now with that key, let's set up a wallet. We'll press the plus on the wallet. We'll press create new wallet. And here we'll say label tutorial for the wallet name. Okay. And now we press continue. And now here you'll have all the options for any of the keys that you've already imported into your nunchuck wallet. In our case, we only have one key, so we'll check that. But if you had multiple keys, you know, this is actually where you would make a multi-sig, okay? Um, so Nunchuck can also make multi-sigs, and I'll do a tutorial on that at some point in the future. But for this, for this tutorial, we'll just stick with the single sig, press continue, and create wallet, okay? Um, you can, uh, you know, back up your uh, configuration file or your XPUB um, at this point. This is basically the same thing as, you know, that JSON file that we had earlier on. Um, so I'll just skip this step and now press done. So right off the bat, you'll see here, here's the label tutorial wallet, and it already has those 4,000 sets, which we saw earlier in Sparrow. So if we go and we click in here, and we click on view coins, you'll see there's the three UTXOs or the three coins, which we saw earlier in Sparrow. So this is the exact same wallet, right? Where we have the, you know, the, the same um, data uh, and history of the Bitcoin wallet, which we had had in Sparrow wallet. Now, what we don't have is we don't have the labels, right? These UTXOs don't have any, don't have any labels, all right? Um, if I wanted to add a label in Nunchuck, um, I can either add a tag, which will have like a hashtag in front of it, or if I want to add a, a, a label and, and not do any tags, what I do is I click here where that 
receive is. And then if I open up more details, I can add a transaction note. And that is, you know, essentially what a label is. Okay. But first let's, um, let's actually show how to just import the labels we already have in Sparrow and we'll import them into Nunchuck. Okay. So I'm going to go back and I'll just put this down now. Let's go back to Sparrow. Um, and actually I'm going to, I'll unplug the SD card because we're going to need that. Okay. So let's go back to Sparrow now. I'll plug the SD card in first and in Sparrow Wallet, what we do if we want to export the labels is we go to file, we go to export wallet. And here you'll see one of the options is labels. So we'll export the labels file. We'll save it in our SD card and it will be named label tutorial dash labels. And it's going to have this dot JSON L um, uh, ending. So we'll save that. Okay. And now we can eject that SD card. And let's put this back into our mobile device. Okay. All right. And now back on Nunchuck, we're going to click this middle part here where it says view wallet config. We'll click on the three dots at the top and see there's a bunch of different options here. So one of them is import labels. Click on that. It's going to ask if you want to uh, use a nunchuck file format or a BIP329. We're going to use BIP329, which is the, the um, standard way of importing and exporting labels in uh, Bitcoin wallets. And it's the standard that Sparrow Wallet uses. And so it's going to give us a warning saying, you know, if you import these labels, um, it might overwrite some of your previous labels. And so that's fine. We don't have any previous ones. So we'll just click yes. And now again, it opens in the iCloud drive initially, but we can click on this browse, go to the SD card. And now here's that label file, which we have just exported from Sparrow. So we'll click on that and there we go. Import completed. So let's go ahead and check to see if that actually worked. And there you have it. So you've got the labels for each of the transactions, which we had had previously. And then if we go ahead and we click on view coins, we can see that those labels also got added to each of these coins. Okay. Let's just go ahead and click into one of these coins. And again, if you click up here where it says that receive, and then you drop down these details, now you'll see that that label got put into this transaction note, right? Um, now let's actually, you know, let's edit this. <laughs> let's say uh, we want to also give this, you know, let's say like consolidation. Okay. So we've updated the label so that it says consolidation as well. And if we save that, I'll update the label there. And if we go back, we see now it says consolidation, right? If we wanted to now um, export these labels and, and have that update into Sparrow, what we would have to do is again, we'd have to go to view wallet config, click on those three dots. And now we do export labels. And again, we'll click on the BIP 329 file type. We'll continue here. Okay. Here we'll do save to files, save it on the SD card and save. Okay. I'm going to take this back out and we'll put this back into the computer to import that into Sparrow now. Okay. So now in Sparrow, if you want to import labels from Nunchuck, you'll go to file. Oh, I'm not in Sparrow. <laughs> now we're in Sparrow. Uh, you'll go to file and you'll go to import wallet. 
Now in Import Wallet, you'll scroll all the way down until you find the Labels section, and you'll click Import File. And now here, this is the file that was just saved from Nunchuck. So it's going to um, it's going to have the wallet name that was on Nunchuck underscore bit three two nine labels, and it's going to be a dot JSON file. So we'll open that. Okay, and now if we go to transactions. You'll see that this one got updated, right, with consolidation. If we go to our UTXOs, you'll notice that the UTXOs didn't get updated themselves. So going from Nunchuck to Sparrow, um, it looks as though it actually doesn't update the UTXOs. It only updates the transactions. So that's one thing to note. You know, it's not a <laughs> it's not a perfect system, right? Um, I think that the ways in which uh, these two applications display labels, um, you know, under the hood are a little bit different. And so you won't always be able to export, you know, specific UTXO tags or labels that you have on Nunchuck. Um, but at least on the transaction level, they'll be able to sync in this way. All right. So anyways, um, you know, it's kind of a quick tutorial. Uh, I hope that that helped you, you know, wrap your head around the idea that you can have the same Bitcoin wallet, you know, loaded in both Sparrow on your desktop and Nunchuck on your mobile device. Um, you know, if you're spending, if you're trying to spend your funds on Nunchuck, it's going to be the same exact process as, you know, when you spend on Sparrow, you'll have to create a transaction. You'll then have to sign that or sorry, you'll have to save that transaction on your SD card, bring it into your cold card, sign it, and then bring it back into Sparrow, and, sorry, into Nunchuck, and then broadcast it from Nunchuck. So it's the exact same process that you've gotten used to with Sparrow, right, on your desktop, um, but it's also possible to do that on your mobile device as well, as long as you've got one of these, you know, SD card readers. And if you don't have an SD card reader, um, you know, the cold card does have the, uh, the NFC capability, so it is possible in some cases to use that as well um, if your phone has an NFC reader, right? You can, you can actually sign via NFC. Um, but, you know, I, I, would, I would still recommend using the, the SD card. It's a little bit more reliable. Um, I think it's, you know, probably less prone to uh, hacks as well, right? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and that's it, right? But but there are options if you don't have one of those readers. Anyways, um, that's all. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Um, otherwise, I'll catch you all in the next tutorial.